Welcome to Getting Granular, the podcast where digital marketing experts from the agency Granular talk about the latest trends, tried and true best practices, and share their unfiltered thoughts about the industry. Whether you're here to learn how to grow your business, improve your digital skills, or just want to hear some Midwest PPC experts rant about digital media, you've come to the right place. Welcome to the Getting Granular podcast. I am your host for today. My name is Matt Frieder, and I am the Marketing Operations Manager here at Granular. Today, we're going to be talking to Jason Stinnett. Um, He is part of the Granular team, and we're just going to dive right into our topics right after a short intro from Jason. Hey, everyone. Jason Stinnett. I'm the Senior Manager, Paid Search at Granular. have over 12 years' experience working in one flavor or another of digital marketing. And excited to talk to you today about paid search. So we'll we'll jump right in. One of the first questions I always like to ask anybody that works in the PPC space is, how did you get into it? For me, I kind of stumbled into it. I went to school and studied history, sociology, social science, which are things that are fascinating when you're a college student, but don't necessarily prepare you for, uh, there isn't always a clear direction where you're going to go in terms of career. So after school, I worked odd jobs and then dusted off some of my hobbies from high school, which were building websites, programming. And as I was reading up on the latest web design techniques, I stumbled upon something called SEO. At the time, it was very new, very technical, and ultimately just fell in love with that and was able to turn that into my first digital marketing career. We we often hear that a lot of people kind of being self-taught and you know falling into ppc and paid media because you know you can't really go to college for it you know five years ago there weren't really any programs for that how did you kind of teach yourself the the ins and outs of all these different ad platforms a lot of it was just trial and error and really since it was such a new industry that's what everyone was doing the other thing was just trying to find out who was sharing good information There's always been a lot of self-promotion, especially in the SEO space, but across digital marketing. And the key thing is understanding who is someone who's trying to push their agenda and make a sale and who is really sharing genuine information that's going to benefit you if you implement those ideas. So what's the thing that kind of keeps you focused on paid media that kind of keeps you working in this space? It's really the mix of creative and technical. Early on, I spent some time doing IT and I loved how technical it was. But a lot of the focus with IT is just on pure efficiency. There's not a lot of room to get creative. I also did a stint doing copywriting. And while I like the creative aspect, it just wasn't technical enough. And I find that paid search is that perfect mix of technical, creative. There's a ton of innovation going on in really technical technical aspects of how to optimize your campaigns. But at the end of the day, you still need to have great creative that resonates with your target audience. For sure. It's definitely a mix of art of, of art and science. Um, yeah, I mean, when it comes to, you know, there's the whole analytic side of things, and then there's the whole creative side of things, and then landing pages and user design and all that. So there's definitely a great, a great mix of the two. So we're going to step in the way back machine for a second. You know, you've been doing this 10, 12 years. What did paid search look like when you first started? Things were a lot simpler. The first company I worked at, we were really excited about running Yahoo ads. And right now, Yahoo ads is pretty much unexistent. The the tools that you had to work with were a lot simpler as well. You had keywords and basic text ads. That was really about it. Whereas you look now, there's been tons of different ad formats continually being released, different channels. Back then, it was mostly Google and Yahoo. Bing didn't even exist at the time. And now you have Google, Yahoo, Bing, other engines like Reddit, Quora, YouTube. And the list just continues to grow. Even in 2019, we see new ad platforms really coming onto the scene and emerging as bigger players. So we've gone from two, three platforms to, you know, 20, 30, 40 plus, there's probably a whole bunch of that are going to be coming out within the next couple of years. Where do you see the kind of future of the paid media space going? And, you know, what, what makes you the most excited about it? 
So one major trend is that artificial intelligence and machine learning has really hit the mainstream. We're getting to a point where marketers can't really ignore it at all. We have to figure out what tasks are machines really good at and should we be delegating things to? And what are the tasks like creative that machines may not be as good at and we really need to maintain control over? Another trend that excites me with all the emergence of all these new channels is just the need to continually learn and keep up. You can't just be an expert at Google anymore. There, You need to understand how to reach people across all these different channels. And that continual learning aspect is something that has always excited me and really has kept me engaged with digital marketing over my whole career. So we're seeing AI, you know, come into a lot of different things. Google, Bing, you kind of touched on it before. What are some of the aspects that you really like and some of the aspects that maybe you don't quite like yet? So analytics and machine learning is kind of a hobby of mine, something that I study on the side. So I'm excited to bring that to my day job. One of the things that's been a challenge is that in order to push adoption, a lot of the advertising companies has pushed AI and machine learning as the solution to everything. And really it's just one tool in the toolbox. So I think one of the things we do well here is understanding when's the right time to take out that tool and apply it. We're also good about let's test this out and if it doesn't work, let's change directions rather than saying, hey, AI is here and it's here to stay. So one of the things that we hear a lot is people kind of being squeamish when it comes to digital marketing. They say, Google knows way too much about me. There's all these targeting options. It makes me uncomfortable. You know, how do you kind of approach paid media and PPC when that's kind of swirling around everything? Sure. It's definitely top of mind. And I think it should be top of mind for any marketer in the modern age. In many ways, I feel mixed about it as an individual consumer. No, I don't really like how much information my phone tracks about me. I don't love that my phone tracks my location continually throughout the day. On the flip side, as a marketer, my mission is always to create an ad that gets people excited. And I think if you're listening to this, this podcast, you've certainly had the experience where you've seen an ad and you're like, that is so cool. I need that. Really, that's what I'm trying to do every day. And the targeting options that we have available in many ways help me do that. It, help me, it helps me identify who's going to get really excited about the product or service I'm selling and pitch, them, pitch it to them at the right moment. So when it comes to kind of reporting and ROI, I, I mean, I, I know I, I hear a lot of leads that, that are coming in, a lot of people that, that talk to us for the first time, and they're really concerned with ROI. And obviously that makes sense. Everybody wants ROI from any kind of marketing that they do. What is your kind of approach to uh, reporting ROI and, and kind of making that clear when sometimes it's not always clear? When you think about ROI, the first thing is just make sure you have clearly defined business goals. I work with some clients where they're not even tracking things like phone calls or contact forms. We don't really know if things are working. And in those cases, the first step is really to just get that tracking in place, set a baseline, collect data on what has worked so that we can continue to fine tune, double down on what's working and cut back on the things that aren't. There's also a long-term component with marketing. While everyone wants sales tomorrow and leads tomorrow, there's some customers that are going to see an ad and purchase right away. There's another group of people who love to do a ton of research. They're going to check the review sites. They're going to check out all your competitors. They're going to look for independent reviews and testimonials. And so those people, they're not going to convert right away, but getting your company name in front of them early is going to help you generate more sales and more demand much further down the road. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I always try to think about, it's almost like a diesel engine, kind of takes a second to get warm, and then once it's up and running, like it, you can really start seeing the results. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people that want that instant return, and that, that can happen for sure. There usually is some bit of instant return, but knowing that it's kind of a a longer play and kind of something that's that's pretty consistent that's cool um so 
talk about some specializations. Um, the cool thing at, at at Granular is just about everybody on the team has you know a lot of past experience in something, and usually people specialize in in a particular area or vertical. Um, so, do you have any particular specializations or some experience that you have? Yeah, right at the start of my career, I actually spent a year working for a company that only advertised furniture stores. And then most recently, I spent five years working at an agency that only worked in the legal industry, which is unique because it's consistently one of the most expensive, most competitive verticals for a paid search. So you have some experience in like the legal space. Um, are there any areas that you like to work in? Um, maybe some some new ones that you've run into since working at Granier? Yeah, one that I've really been enjoying is B2B e-commerce. As a analytics-focused person, I really like having that sales data. I can see not only did I drive the lead, but did I actually drive a purchase and deliver revenue. The other thing I like about B2B is that it's a lot easier to build a brand. In a lot of B2C spaces, it's pretty tough to come up with a new pair of shoes or a new sweatshirt and compete with these mega global brands that are so established. Where with B2B, you could come up with a a niche accounting product and really make a splash and improve people's lives like a lot of entrepreneurs want to without having to have those millions of dollars in your pockets. So Jason, you've been with the granular team for about three months now. What are some of your favorite aspects of working at Granular? I think the reason that Granular is such a great fit for me is that the emphasis is really on high service. So I've worked at some places before where it was the low price, low service. You're kind of just cranking things out. And what I like about Granular is that we make sure to work with companies that are interested in having that high level of service, and then we absolutely deliver on it. We don't delegate things to inexperienced interns and charge a premium price for that, which would be premium price, low service. We're really making sure that you're only working with established experts who are going to take the time to understand your business and continue to improve upon our results. Thanks for listening to the Getting Granular podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any PPC tips, tricks, or news from the digital marketing world. This is your host, Matt Frieder. And thanks for getting granular with us today.